It's, it's very much my honor and, and pleasure to be with you here today. Tommy is the crazy guy with the hat. What's with the hats? It's just my trademark. It's something that tells you that Tommy wants to meet with you. I will be in no hurry to leave here at the end of my presentation. Come and talk to me. If you see me two months from now at Schiphol Airport, hey, that's the guy at, at, with the hat. Or you see me two years from now at JFK in New York or at Changi Airport in Singapore. Tommy, we met in Rotterdam. I saw you speak. Come talk to me. It's my trademark. OK. Now, um, so those of you who have seen me before know that I like to start with a joke. A little joke, many of you are from the computer side of the industry, so let's do a little joke about computers and mobiles. Did you know, absolutely this is a fact, that the smartphone in your pocket is as powerful as a supercomputer was only 20 years ago? If you have an iPhone 5, if you have a Samsung Galaxy S3, you have a BlackBerry Bold, you have one of those Lumia phones from Nokia, whatever, that phone has the computing power equivalent computing power of a smartphone 20 years ago. In fact, what you have in your pocket is so much computing power as all computers that NASA used when they sent the man to the moon. In your pocket today. So, NASA, in 1969, used all of its computer power to launch man to the moon. And we'd use our little androids and iPhones to launch angry birds at some crazy pigs, right? So, yes, I'm from uh, Finland, home of angry birds and Rovio. I now live in Singapore, and I write some books about the, the mobile industry. So, let's talk a little bit about where this, this future is going. How to do the mobile side of e-business. How big is mobile? Probably you've been hearing a lot and reading a lot about how big it is. You might not really know exactly how big it is. If you are in the media industries, you recognize these kind of numbers. There are 1.3 billion uh, personal computers. There are 1.9 billion television sets on the planet. Over 2 billion people use the internet. Over 4 billion radio sets are in use. But Tommy, you forgot to add the red line. Where's mobile? This is mobile. At the end of this year, the mobile moment arrives. First technology ever that has as many paying consumers, as many customers as the total population of the planet. The mobile moment. My consultancy calculates that it will happen February of 2013, but you will hear plenty of analysts start celebrating this number in December. Some might even celebrate it in November, but the mobile moment is now only weeks away from today. Never before, not television, not the internet, not pen and paper. Illiterate people, the United Nations calculates there are 800 million adults on the planet who are illiterate, who have no use for this technology, who have mobile phones. Wristwatches. Wristwatch industry is in decline, but everyone has a clock on their mobile phone. There has never been a technology this widely spread as mobile is today. But I don't care about the reach. Oh, by the way, we're not done. After humans, we die, but mobile will connect still to you. We now connect dead people. Japan started this, England is already doing this, and I'm sure this will be on Dutch graveyard soon. You put QR codes on the gravestones. Why do you do this? Why do you do this crazy idea? Because what happened when grandpa died, and you go and visit the grave? Opa. You visited Opa's grave, and you, you know, click on the QR code, and you can see the video of his, you can see the wedding picture of grandma, grandpa, and grandmother gets a message that you visited the grave today, and so forth. This is interactivity, social media, etc. We want to connect, we want to remember, we want to cherish. But my industry is now connecting dead people. Not only dead people, you become an angel, and you fly to heaven. St. Jan's Cathedral in Den Bosch, you know the little angel, Ud Engelsche. 
however you pronounce that, little angel, statue with the mobile phone calls directly to God, and you can get tweets from, from the little angel. The Netherlands is leading in this space of connecting beyond human beings. Okay, so how fast is mobile? The IAV measured in England comparing e-business and m-business. If you are Amazon and you are selling Tommy's books online, then you do the mobile version and you do mobile commerce to sell the same books. What is the difference? IAB measured in England the average person who goes online to do e-business. It takes about one month from the first time of visiting the e-business site to when they actually give money to make a purchase. On mobile, it is one hour. The difference is not twice as fast, or 10 times as fast, or 100 times as fast. The difference is 720 times faster. It's not just that my, my industry reaches more people than the internet. I am much faster than the internet. And this is nothing. This is nothing close to the peak performance that mobile offers. Look at this. Latest numbers from Ofcom in England. They tell that the average SMS text message is read in five seconds. The average email is read in 24 hours. And by the way, 80% of email is never opened. But the ones that are opened on average are opened in 48 hours. Mobile is 34,000 times faster in messaging than the internet. I love this industry, but I don't care about the reach and the speed. How is our addiction? Feel that urge to go play a little angry word birds while Tommy is speaking? We've measured it. T-Mobile says the average mobile phone user looks at their mobile phone 150 times per day. If you smoke cigarettes, you go into your pocket. One pack a day, you go 20 times. Three packs a day, you go 60 times, but the average person looks at their mobile phone 150 times per day. Not in the Netherlands. You are one of the world's leading countries in smartphones. Look what The Guardian just reported. The smartphone user on average looks at their mobile phone 200 times per day. That means on average for every waking hour, it's once every five minutes. While Tommy is speaking, you're going into your pocket seven times. Did this crazy Finnish guy already end? You know, do I have something better to do? How's my boss? You know, let's play some Angry Birds, and so forth. Okay, in Finland, you do have an Angry Bird soda. If you visit Helsinki Airport, buy some Angry Bird cola and bring it to your kids. They will love it. Okay, okay. So, the consumer of mobile. That was the size of the industry. Let's take a couple of looks at what does the customer look like in this industry. And I like to look at the young people. They're the customer of tomorrow. And what we do in general. So, we all do this. Every one of us takes the mobile phone in bed with us, of course. It still surprises many people. It's the first thing we do when the, we wake up. It's the last thing we see before we fall asleep, is the mobile phone. And now you think Dutch people are very wild with your sex? Here's a statistic from England. 12% of British mothers admit to using their mobile phone while having sex. I want this statistic measured in the Netherlands. You can probably do better than this. But anyway, I'm showing this around the world. Look how crazy the conservative British women are. Oh, yes. Oh, awesome. Okay, but the more practical part, from New Zealand. 38% of New Zealand mobile phone users already have gone into their pocket to decide on an argument or to settle a bet. So who won the football, uh, you know, Dutch championship, you know, in, in 1969? Was it Feyenoord or Ajax or PSV? We go into the pocket and find out the answer. That's one in three people already today in New Zealand. It'll be a similar number here. It'll be half of the population by the end of next year. The truth is in our pocket. It is the magical truth machine changes completely your behavior when your relationship with that crazy little device is like this, that it tells the truth. And then if you are in retail, this is the most frightening slide in the world. I'm sorry you can't sleep tonight, but at least tomorrow morning you can schedule a meeting with your ad, uh, creative agency because 
Measurements by Comscore from America. American smartphone penetration is lower than Netherlands, so your number here will be bigger. In America, half of people with a smartphone had changed their mind inside a retail store while shopping because of something they found on their mobile phone. They were in the store ready to buy from your store, and they went into their pocket and they found something better somewhere else and left the store not giving you their money. They were in your store. Half have done this already. In the Netherlands, this is definitely higher than half. Smartphone users and definitely smartphone penetration higher than America. So this is going to be total disaster for, for you. If you don't have a mobile optimized website and in your store QR codes and web links and have your consumers all sign into your website, which is mobile optimized, you're out of the game. Because your competitor is there and they will find your competitor's site and go to your competitor's store. Sorry, I know I messed up your life, those of you in retail, but at least, you know, the guys in the advertising creative agencies, tomorrow morning you'll be getting good business wanting to do this. So, how about the future of the internet? I happened to work early in my career for OCSNY, which is the, the first internet service provider in New York City. Just by accident, it was an early job for me. So I've been monitoring the internet from, from the beginning, and, and then I saw the mobile internet. I wrote the first white paper on how we do the mobile internet when I was at Nokia, and so I've been monitoring this space for a while. I was one of the crazy people early on who argued that there will not be one web. There will not be one converged internet solution. There are two internets. One is the legacy, old-fashioned, lazy, difficult to make money, personal computer, PC, internet. And one is the new future, easy to make money, much more addictive, mobile internet. There are two separate entities with overlap. I was one of the crazy heretics who wrote this about this 10 years ago in my books. Luckily today, I'm no longer alone. These are the actual facts, internet users today. It is not one converging picture. The pictures are moving apart. On the planet today, there are more people consuming internet content on mobile phones than on personal computers. The overlapping part is shrinking. The much bigger picture is the mobile side, and the mobile-only user part is increasing. It doesn't mean that the internet has stopped growing on the PC side. It's just that mobile is growing much, much faster and deliver, delivering much, much more. But please don't misunderstand me. The internet won't die. These both will exist and grow. They'll be happily living forever and ever and ever. It's just that mobile is the bigger opportunity right now. In the future, it'll be something else. I like to explain the difference on this simple comparison. I like to talk about 30-minute tasks and 30-second tasks. 30-minute tasks are the kind of things that we plan for. They are the kind of things that we work on a personal computer, on a laptop. These are the kind of things that we don't want to do standing up. We want to have a chair where we can sit and we can work comfortably like these gentlemen here with their laptops. We want to do seated work when we are on a laptop or a PC. That's where we have time, that's where we can give focused attention, and typically, for example, in the messaging space, that's where we use email, Facebook, Twitter, and so forth. That's where we create information, if we are a writer, if we are a creative person, if we are you know, doing our video editing, and, and, and so forth. Compare mobile. Mobile arrives suddenly in your pocket with no planning. Suddenly, your boss needs you because your customer is now at the office and what are you still doing at that event? And please hurry, don't care about the Finnish guy. Come to the office now, hurry, hurry, hurry. Okay, arrives in our mobile phone right now. It is unplanned use. We do it while we are standing, we do it while we are walking. We multitask. We do it with other media at the same time. And that's much more consumption than creation part of this kind of experience. These two are distinct use patterns. The more we have access to both platforms, this is how our behavior changes. We do certain things on the PC platform, certain things on mobile. Then if there's an emergency and one doesn't happen to be around, we do it with the other one as a workaround. What is the role of the iPad, the, the, the tablet? I think it's a three-minute task here in the middle. Some of doing some what we do on the PC and doing some what we're doing on the smartphone, but it sits in the middle. But we don't have yet enough data to really know. We need to study the, the, the tablet market more. But I think it will be 
30-minute tasks, 3-minute tasks, and 30-second and tasks. But anyway, I think that it, it comes here into the middle. So, what do we do to mobile optimize? The world's biggest internet company, Google, says the future of the internet is mobile. That is no surprise. They said that five years ago. Today, when Google talks to its own customers, this is a Google event I just attended in Thailand where I delivered the keynote. When Google talks to its own customers, it says that you have to mobile optimize your website. There is no one internet. This is the biggest internet company, which is now repeating my story from 10 years ago. You have to mobile optimize your website. Why? They show hundreds of examples. This is one, Wheeler uh, uh, intercity bus travel from Japan. The two websites in the picture, the, 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 the left side, the left side is, is the internet page, if you look at it on a smartphone, and the right side is the, the, the mobile-optimized website. It's obvious to you when you look at that clutter and you look at the clean page, which one will you more prefer? And obviously, it's going to outperform the internet. But look at the numbers. Three times more bookings once you mobile-optimized your website. Every one of you has a website. If you have not mobile optimized it, next week's number one priority for your digital team is go study the Google guidance on mobile optimizing. We're mobile optimizing our website. You cannot, cannot live in 2012 in the Netherlands and not have a mobile optimized website when 70% of your consumers have smartphones. Come on, this is ridiculous. Three times better business. I've got dozens of such examples, but this is what Google shows around the world when it teaches its own customers about the mobile internet. So, mobile is the seventh mass media. You don't need to buy my book on that. Go to Wikipedia. You've got the information there. Seven media in chronological order. Print was the oldest, 500 years old. Then came recordings. Then came cinema. Then came radio. Then came television. These are the traditional legacy five media that you can go to any university and study media studies. Then we get the new media, the digital media, which is the internet and which is mobile. So those are the seven. Any one of you understands instinctively that television is a broadcast media, as is radio, but television is different from radio. Every one of you understands instinctively that we can report the same football game with Feyenoord on radio and on television, but the experience will be different. And we need different competence. On television, we don't want the guy talking all the time. The action is on the screen. On radio, we don't want any silence. We want to hear what is happening, even when nothing is going on in the football game. The guy has to talk. We understand this instinctively. There are different media. I was the first person to argue mobile is as different from the internet as television is different from radio. While both are digital interactive media, mobile is as different from the internet as television is different from radio. And if you try to deploy radio services on television, you will die. If you try today to deploy standard internet services and deploy them on mobile, it's as stupid as putting a real horse into a car. Putting the internet on mobile today is as stupid as putting a real horse into a car. Come on, we can do much, 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 much better. Why? Because mobile has unique benefits that you cannot do on the internet. Mobile has nine unique benefits you cannot do on any other media. You cannot do on broadband internet, you cannot do on DVD, you cannot do on television, you cannot do on print, you cannot do on radio, you cannot do on cinema. No other media, outboard, uh, out, outdoor uh, advertising, nothing. Nine unique benefits. Clever person taking a picture of this. You got a camera phone, you might want to take a picture of this slide. This is the most valuable slide you will see from me today. This is the difference between being a millionaire and being a billionaire. This is the difference between your, st your startup succeeding and failing. This is where the future will be. These are the nine unique abilities on how you can make satisfied customers, how you can make successful advertising campaigns, how you can make business out of your e-business e site, and how you can make a success for your own team, your own career, your promotion, your bonus, your success. Eventually, you buy a beautiful boat. You to invite Tommy to come over and have a drink with your, on your boat when you have your first million made. Good. Now, let's take a look at each one of these one by one. I will show you one example of the success we have currently around the world. 
nine unique benefits of mobile. We start with uh, unique benefit number one, which is that mobile is the first personal mass media. Teenage boys are only paying attention to one thing, and that's something that is sexy girls. If you are the deodorant brand, Lynx, Axie, the deodorant for, you know, from Unilever for young teenage boys, you have to do sexy stuff to get their attention. This is the wake-up girls from Japan. Real girls, shown online and shown on TV. Select your favorite girl, have her installed onto your mobile phone as your alarm clock. Tomorrow morning, my alarm clock is not waking me up in my hotel going, bzzz, bzzz, bzzz. It's actually the sexy Japanese girl going, hello, Tommy. Time to wake up. And every morning, she wears something a little bit different, you know. And then the last thing she says is, remember to put on your deodorant. Deodorant sale of Lynx went up 300% after this campaign. Hello. Of course, we're going to do this. We're going to copy this idea. Unique benefit number two, mobile is permanently connected. I'm sorry for another Japanese example straight in a row, but I have to show this everywhere around the world. If you are in print media, please copy this idea now. Do it immediately before someone else does. This is Tokyo Girl. This is a totally free mobile magazine for teenage girls. What are teenage girls interested in? They're interested in, in makeup, they're interested in fashion, they're interested in boys. You know, dating at tips, you know, how do you, how do you appear sexy to the boy, and what if, you know, how do you know if your love romance is dying? And, well, you know, teenage magazine for girl, girls. Totally free on their favorite media, mobile, twice a week. How do they make money? How can you do this? First of all, it's a freemium service. 10% of the girls purchase the gold level package in which you get more information. You get videos and things like that beyond the free version. Then they have the platinum version. You sign up for the platinum version, and then you get real personal live experiences like their twice uh, yearly uh, attendance to their uh, fashion shows and so forth. Those of you who are involved in advertising, look at the part in red. I am not talking about click-through rates. I am not talking about response rates. This service delivers 45% conversion rates. Hennes and Mauritz advertises a blouse. 10,000 girls see the ad, 4,500 blouses were sold. This is the most powerful advertising ever made so far. Japanese will do better next year. But at the moment, the most powerful in the world, the time, the, the cost of advertising on this channel is more expensive now than prime time television advertising in Japan, in Tokyo. To get, to get, if you get 45% conversion rate, you can sell anything to these girls. They do it by limit. There's a limited number of ads and auction. So the price constantly keeps going up. And they're just magical, magical superpower. Copy this. The, the people who run Tokyo Girl don't want to do Amsterdam Girl. They don't want to come and do Milan Girl. They don't want to come and learn about the British market and do London Girl. They're just happy to, the Japanese market is so advanced, they make so much money. Copy the idea. Launch it here. Uh, unique benefit number three, only mobile is always carried. Service example here comes from Finnair. Finnair invented mobile check-in. What are they doing with it now, 10 years later? Half of all Finnair passengers today use mobile check-in. Finnair flies from Amsterdam to, to uh, Helsinki now, you know, afternoon flight. Ticket office has closed at Schiphol Airport. Those 94 people are, you know, at, at being in check-in and x-rayed and, and through, you know, passport control and take out your shoes and, and how many do you have a laptop in your bag and so forth. Going in, inside ship all, do some, some tax-free shopping and sitting in the lounge and so forth. You cannot sell to them anymore and ticket sales is already closed. Because 90 minutes from now, the plane will take off. Finnair knows that it has three available seats in business class that were unsold today. On this flight, today, from Amsterdam to Helsinki this afternoon flight. It goes to the platinum level, Finnair frequent flyers, and says, oh, you know, actually today we have three, a couple of empty seats in business class. If you would like to buy a discounted upgrade, 50 euros, because you're a platinum level customers, and you can sit in business class and, and fly to Helsinki. 
Then after that, 10 minutes later, it sends another message to the gold level passenger saying, we have still a couple of seats left in business class. If you pay 75 euros, we'll upgrade you to business class just on this one flight. Then it goes to the silver. If there's still a seat left to go to the silver level customers, 100 euros, we'll upgrade you. They sell out business class on every single flight. You know that Finns like to drink. We drink a lot. You cannot drink enough to make this not profitable. <laughs> Even if you have you know, business class, you drink every single, the whole two hours, you know, vodka, you cannot you know, make up the, the price increase that they've just charged you. And otherwise, the same passenger, the same, same, same luggage, everything, the same Airbus flies from, from Amsterdam to, to Helsinki, no matter what. Same passenger already paid a tourist class ticket for it. Upgrades, beautiful. Unique benefit number four, mobile has a built-in payment mechanism. We can turn any advertising and flip it into a, a purchase. Look at this. The Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue, released as a totally free app. You can see all the girls in, on your smartphone in, in their, their bikinis, in their swimsuits. And, and they had half a million uh, downloads in America. At the end, the last, the end of the, the, the app, there is a click, through, click to buy button. If you would like to see the video version of this same app, 50 videos of these sexy girls, how we made this, this, this uh, uh, catalog. $2, $1.99, click here. Click to buy. 10% of the boys who downloaded this, well, boys, some girls too, uh, who downloaded this bought the paid version. Any advertising you do now, copy this idea. Click to buy at the end. Only mobile offers. You cannot do this on the internet. On the internet, you have to have a PayPal account. You have to have a credit card. Mobile. Click to buy. Done. Unique benefit number five. Mobile is available at the creative impulse. South Korea. Camera phone shopping. So this is a subway station, train station in, in Seoul, South Korea. You come to the station. You want to do some uh, your shopping today. These are life-size pictures of your groceries. So you need some orange juice. You take a picture of this. You want some milk. You take a picture of this, two pictures of this. All of that gets delivered to your home before you arrive home on this train. Increased sales, not 30%. Increased sales, 130%. More than doubled. Grocery sales, retail. The guy who launched this, massive promotion, big bonus. Unique benefit number six. Mobile measures the audience most accurately. Kaiser, health provider in America, saves half a million dollars every year by sending SMS reminders. You have your doctor's appointment tomorrow at 2, please don't be late. If you need to cancel it, please click here to change. You need benefit number seven. Mobile measure, uh, captures the social context of our consumption, our recommendations, our fan clubs, and so forth. Honda fan club, motorcycle fan club in Japan, it lets you create an avatar of yourself your nice leather jacket and your cool t-shirt and everything. And then you go somewhere in Japan where you think Honda motorcycles might ride by and you take your mobile phone and you say, I'm going to hitchhike here. Click. And then you walk away. Two hours later, along comes a Honda owner who rides a Honda motorcycle who has registered for this service. The network automatically places your guy hitchhiking because there was no one else, one person at a time, hitchhiking. And now you are traveling north. You get a f message in your pocket. You know, 10 minutes later, it's like, oh, by the way, you are having an adventure. Your avatar is now traveling north. You can click here to see more about it. Oh, it's a Firebird, uh, uh, fast uh, uh, Fireblade, fast Honda motorcycle, and sexy girl rider. And oh, I send messages to her. She looks ugly, g old guy, stay away from me. Anyway, when, when she stops riding, that's where the de network deposits me. And now I'm hitchhiking again. And then two hours later, someone else comes by who ha doesn't have a hitchhiker and picks up. 1.8 million kilometers already ridden by, by avatars. Imaginary people having an adventure on your behalf for you, that you can explore your favorite brands together. Mobile enables augmented reality. We know Netherlands, one of the world's leading countries in augmented reality. This is not, not surprise for you. Layer, one of the big companies in this space. But look what Wonderbra just did. It's not the magazine auto augmented reality like you have with uh, VT Vonen here, for example, the, the furniture magazine and so forth. No, this is video, YouTube video. They augmented reality a standard YouTube video. If you go to YouTube and you watch this video, you see the girl on the left. 
She tells the story about what she's wearing now and what she's wearing underneath. The only way to see what she's wearing underneath, you get the AR app and you look at the same video and you see the bikini version. So you see what was the sexy stuff underneath, why she looks so sexy, etc. Cool stuff. I think boys will use this more than girls, but girls will appreciate it too. So, so the, the trick here is actually they synchronized it to sound. So you can actually have your YouTube video playing there and you can look at your smartphone here and you see the sexy part anyway. It doesn't actually sync with the video. It syncs in the sound in the video. But anyway, sexy new way, augmented reality. In YouTube video, who knew? Unique benefit number nine. Mobile offers a digital interface to the real world. Over here in Germany, right next door, next to Dortmund, there's the town of Lemgo. Lemgo was the worst, first town to deploy this solution. They take the side streets at night the street lights are turned off to save electricity. When you walk home and you want your home street on, you send a text message, the lights come on for 15 minutes, just in time for you to get home. A town of 40,000 people saves 50,000 euros. Beautiful, simple, easy. So, how about the platform of the future? That was mobile today. Where do we go next? First of all, on mobile, Visa says, Visa says the future of payments is mobile. Associated Press says the future of news is mobile. But what comes after mobile? The eighth mass media is augmented reality. We can do augmented reality on a smartphone, but we can do it on other media. We can uh, other technologies. We can do it on an uh, iPad. We can do it in sound. Soon we're going to have the Google goggles. We're going to have it in glasses. So it's not a mobile only technology. It's a new mass media. So let me show you a little bit of what augmented reality gives us. We know this, uh, you know, layer, all this stuff, but for example, the IKEA catalog. The room here doesn't have a sofa. You take your smartphone, IKEA select, you know, Björn, Benny, Agneta, you know, crazy Swedish names, all the IKEA furniture. And then, then uh, uh, which one do you want the sofa in blue, in red, in green? You can test them in your home without actually carrying the furniture in. Lovely little idea. Okay, where are we going with this now into the future? Let me show you what I imagine early media will look like with Google Goggles. So this is a video I prepared in Hong Kong. Imagine that I just turned on the Google Goggle. The bottom part is my Google Goggle view, and the top part shows the rest. We are in Mong Kok now in Hong Kong, busy part of Hong Kong, and I'm walking around. I'm a tourist. I don't speak the local language. I don't know exactly where I'm going. And Hong Kong, of course, is full of all of this advertising, and all of this is in this crazy language with these crazy characters. Who knows what this means? But Google Goggles will automatically translate it for me. That's money exchange. Automatically. And then, because I'm from Finland, I don't need money exchange. Give it this, what is this in Finnish? Ah, valuutan vaihto. Easy. This technology is not rocket science. This is all completely doable today. This is the kind of stuff we will start to see with augmented reality as mass media. So, for example, this. Japanese professors just now measured that if you use augmented reality goggles when you eat, and they magnify the food, same food that you eat, you eat 10% less. It's the crazy connection between our eyes and our brain. So our, brain, our eyes trick our brain. Your dieting is a wonderful idea. You eat exactly the same, you, uh, uh, you feel that you're eating exactly the same, you're totally satisfied, and you actually eat 10% less, just by putting on these dieting glasses. How about this? Disney just now announced they're doing the magical uh, cake, birthday cake. Imagine a six-year-old little girl and suddenly she has, you know, the, the wonderful pr princess dancing on top of the cake. And when she looks inside, inside the cake, there's a little surprise for her. And she can have this magic dust that she can sprinkle on top of the cake. It's a magic wand, etc. Magical experience. This is Disney. This is pure Disney soul. In just that we are part of your celebrations, we're part of your birthdays, and by the way, now we can do augmented reality for your cakes, for your children. Those of you who want to get, understand more, uh, read my latest book, go to lulu.com. I've written 12 books. My 10th book is free, totally free, 350 pages, PDF. If you like it, share it with your friends. So, so honestly, don't buy any of my paid books now. Get the free book first. If you like what I wrote in the free book and there's a part that you want to read more, at the end of every chapter, I tell you what are the books you should read next. Of course, sometimes they're my books, not always. I don't, every chapter doesn't end with read Tommy's book next. There are several chapters where I say, no, 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 I don't even, I'm not the expert in this. Read Tony Fish or read Ajit Chowk or whoever, you know, the other big gurus are. 
So, I, as always, I, we started with a little bit of, of Angry Birds and, and magic. Let, let's end with, with my favorite bits of mobile magic now for the future. When you do mobile services, try to be inspired by creating magic. So, for example, this. It's the deodorant brand again. And those teenage boys. This is Puerto Rico. In Puerto Rico, X offered little QR codes in the men's rooms of discos and bars and pubs and clubs. The men's room. There's this sign which says, bring your phone here to see into the ladies' room. Because we know how the ladies are in the ladies' room, always in bikinis and having little parties, you know. In reality, you don't see the ladies' room, you see videos that Lynx has prepared, which are very sexy, targeting these boys. Look at the performance. 23% of the boys in those restrooms clicked on to see the videos. All men are peeping toms. Of course, we will love this and we will use this. Magical, I can see through walls with mobile phones. Or how about this, back to dieting. How about if you were trying to do your diet plan on your mobile phone? Imagine going to McDonald's and you are now eating a Big Mac and you're having a Diet Coke and you're having the medium-sized fries. Enter all of that, your thumb is going to ache on your smartphone trying to put in all the, what you bought today. In Japan, they've solved this. They have the intelligence to recognize every major food dish sold in Japan which does know the difference between, you know, a, a, a Big Mac and a standard uh, cheeseburger, etc. Over 1,000 dishes, all you need to do is take a picture of the food and it immediately identifies what it is and counts, estimates the calories for you. This is sushi, this is sashimi, this is some inagi, here's some, uh, you're having some, some uh, salad and it has uh, tomatoes in it and uh, lettuce and so forth. Recognizes 1,000 dishes correctly or very closely estimates the, the calories that you just consumed. This is magic. It is like it is reading our mind. We don't need to do all that clumsy, stupid stuff. Think about this when you look at the future. When you do cool stuff, send the, uh, the ideas to me, and I will have to talk about them next time when I'm showing the world how clever the Dutch are. And then maybe if I really like your story, I have to stick it into my next book. So I am on Twitter. Please follow me. And, and uh, I'll be very, very happy to take some questions. So I wanted to make sure that we end more or less on time. Now I would like questions from you. Thank you. Uh, Tommy, thank you very much. How, how, how good is your Dutch? Do you speak any Dutch? <laughs> no, I don't really. I, under, I can read a little bit of it, but no. I can count to ten and say some nasty words. All right, because <laughs> I'm predicting if you are wearing that hat to the bottle, you know, keepish, mm -hmm. you're, you're going to be the most popular fellow at the bottle. <laughs> uh, but don't go uh, yet. Um, I don't, if there are questions from the audience, please raise your hand if you want to ask Tommy a question. Otherwise, you can do it during the bottle. You don't talk, Tommy, about sensors, about phones measuring your, your heartbeat, your, 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 the steps you take, blood pressure. Is that the ninth revolution? or? And it's just one, of, there, there are so many stories, it's impossible for me to decide sure. you know, what all to cover. But I like to say that mobile is the magical measurement machine. Mobile is the magical measurement machine. Anything you ever hoped it was possible to measure accurately, but you never figured out a way, we can now do with mobile. For example, we had a session with the car industry people earlier today. So I was telling them the example that, look, if you get your car customer to volunteer to give you their mobile phone number, and you put a GPS sensor in their car, you will see not only where the car is moving, you will see how often the person who bought the car actually is driving it. You can even see who else is sitting in the car. And you figure these people always sleep together, that's the husband and the wife. Both of them have adult behavior. Sometimes there are two other people sitting in the car. They're the children because they clearly go to a school during the daytime. Then you see that two times a month, the man has someone else in the car and doesn't sleep at home, but sleeps in another part of Rotterdam. <laughs> he has a secret girlfriend. Mm. Mobile is the magical measurement machine. I can measure anything about us, but it can get creepy and it can get nasty. With that, you need to read Tony Fish's book, My Digital Footprint. Mm. My, Tony Fish is the guy who explained that the digital identity that we have, our social security number, our birth date, whether we went to college, our marital status, that is pointless. 
There's no point in asking that question. Don't ask Tommy, is he a boy or a girl? Tommy, exact spelling of my name is boy's name in Finland, exact same name is girl's name in Japan. Don't ask me, am I a boy or a girl, male or female. I might dress secretly in women's underwear. I might be cross-dresser. You want to measure the behavior. The digital footprint is where the value is. The digital identity is worthless. Don't ask your customers for their names. If Tommy Ahonen wants to register on your website as James Bond, because I'm a little bit of a James Bond fan, don't tell me that someone else has already registered a James Bond. Would you like to be James Bond 42? No. I'm the only James Bond. I want to be. Why don't you let me? Because of the mobile phone number, no one else on the planet has my mobile phone number. You don't need to know anything else. Then you start measuring the behavior. Does Tommy go to the Playboy pages? Does Tommy follow Formula One racing? Does Tommy buy James Bond DVDs? You can follow my behavior. But you don't care, need to know, am I 52 years old or am I 16 years old? Unless legal reasons, sometimes you have to ask cer certain content things, there's legal limits. But other than that, don't ask them for any of that stuff. So I'm sorry. Yes, long answer <laughs> for, a, for a short question. Well, we could listen for hours, uh, Tommy, to your uh, stories and your inspiring examples. We've gone way over time. I'd like to thank the audience all for coming to E-Day 2012. I'd like to thank Tommy for being such an inspiring speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, follow the head. See you at the bottle.